do we get more women and more diversity on the start lines of ultra distance trail races? It's a debate that has been going on for some time but has increasingly become a hot topic. Recently, I attended an event in London, organised by one of the race companies who are actively trying to do something to address the issue. Threshold Trail Series are the company responsible for well-known events Race to the Stones and Race to the King, which had remarkably managed to achieve a 50-50 gender split on their start lines pre-pandemic. However, that parity has dropped away somewhat post-Covid. Now though, the company have launched a new initiative called Ultra 50-50. Reading directly from their website, Threshold say Ultra 5050 endeavours to achieve gender parity and set new industry standards to inspire, empower and enable women to take part in events at the toughest end of the running distance spectrum. They have partnered with various groups to try and understand the challenges and address them head on. And whilst at the launch event of Ultra 5050, I took the opportunity to speak to some of those involved, starting with ultra runner Sophie Power, founder of She Races. Sophie, tell me first of all a little bit about She Races. So She Races, essentially we're campaigning for gender equality in mass participation events. So that can be your 5K race, that can be your kind of multidisciplinary triathlon. But really we believe that all women belong on start lines. We want to get more women on start lines. We want races to give women a better experience when we're on those start lines um, and really equally value our competition alongside the men's. Okay. Um, Loads of people will know you from a particular photograph and uh, talking about she races, talking about women in running, uh, explain a bit about why people know your face. So I was going to graft um, breastfeeding while running the UTMB, uh, the 106 mile mountain race um, with my three month old baby um, and I was there because they wouldn't let me defer the race because I've been pregnant and I was very newly postpartum and I didn't want to lose my opportunity. I'd already lost my first place pregnant with my first son. So um, I took part of the race. The Alexis Berg, the amazing photographer, took a picture. Um, it went viral around the world and really highlighting a lot of the barriers that women face um, in running, but also you know, the need of new mothers to support us back to go after our goals. And then about races themselves, you know, there was no pregnancy policy. Why? Um, you're stopping women getting back on those start lines and racing. I should not be racing with a three-month-old baby. So um, I started campaigning for pregnancy deferrals and races, which weren't standard. And then actually step back and there are so many more barriers to women being on start lines. And when we're at races, we don't get the same experience of men do because races are designed through a male lens often. So did a lot of inside work, spoke to over 2,000 um, female athletes, kind of runners, triathletes, cyclists. And to a set of guidelines for races, of free things they can do to just make them more inclusive of women, to kind of attract more women in the first place, with kind of better imagery and looking at the cutoffs and looking at the kind of safety and looking at the logistics, and then make it fair for us. Like none of those male fit t-shirts anymore. Um, we're sick of those. We like proper toilets. We like fewer products in 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 the, in the toilets because on an ultra, your period can come on a week early. Um, and you don't want a DNF because of your period. And, and then really like saying there's a male competition, a female competition, and a male winner, a female winner. The winner is not the best person across the line and really highlighting you know, the female athletes so we can be inspired by those, those women and my daughters too and making sure she's inspired too. So there's a lot events can do and it's really about supporting them to make a better environment for, for women. How do you think big race companies are doing with that? So you mentioned pregnancy deferrals. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about sanitary products in aid stations, um, safety on the course, particularly women running alone at night. Um, how, how well are race companies doing with that kind of stuff? Is there a lot of work to do? Some are brilliant. Um, so we have a she races accreditation. So race, races follow the guidelines. Essentially, like just designing their mate, their race to make it great for women. Um, so those races are brilliant. We have up to 50% kind of female participation on those start lines. There are some races that have a long way to go. Where it really is, you look at the imagery and it's kind of 
quite skinny men, which actually isn't very inclusive of all men because not all men look like that either. I certainly don't. Um, and and you've got the the kind of the pregnancy policies, but also the just not seeing women there, not looking at our toilet provision, kind of not looking. But the language around a race is often so off-putting for women, saying these are the tight cutoffs, and if you miss a cutoff, you're out of the race. And whereas instead of saying we made the cutoffs as long as we can. This is the pace you have to walk, run at to beat the cutoff. This is why it's that way. Making us believe we can finish it rather than putting a barrier saying you have to be this bit to do it. So there are so much that type races can do. Um, but the tide is changing. I launched show races June last year. And now Perry products are almost a normal thing at aid stations. They weren't last year. Um, so it's like taking steps on pregnancy deferrals. Women expect a yes when they ask. Women weren't asking a few years ago when I first took it to London Marathon in HMB. So we're making these changes step by step. But the most important thing for women is we learn that we're entitled to that equal experience of races and empowering women to know that we deserve that and we should speak up. We should tell the race director when things aren't right. A lot of women just share the guidelines. They're like, look, your race was great in all these aspects. Here are things you can do better. Look at the she races guidelines. So that's what we're trying to do. Really just move the needle so you know women are taken into account when events are being planned um, and not are being planned through a, a male lens and we're an afterthought. You must look at data and, and what if there's one thing that comes through that from talking to women about races, about ultras, is there something particular that something that stands out that prevents women start standing on that start line? I mean, if you look at just the, the, the women doing exercise and activity, it's time. I mean, three quarters of us say that we don't have enough time for it. And I think for ultras, a lot of it is understanding that you don't need to be running 50 miles a week to do an ultra and having the confidence that actually, if you're a busy mum on your feet all day, you could probably go and do a 50k race the next day because you probably get around an awful lot in that day. You go a bit further, put some puffier shoes on, feel yourself properly, you can do that. So I think that's the, the mindset, uh, mind, mind, mindset shift that it's not marathon plus, it's marathon minus minus. And if you can do a half marathon, or you can run 10K, you can do an ultra. It's, it's very different. So I think that's the mind, mindset, kind of knowing that you don't have to train as hard as you would do for a marathon maybe to get a certain time to finish an ultra. You just have to keep walking. And there are so many intro ultra events that as long as you're keeping moving forward, they're going to let you keep going. There are no cutoffs. Um, and I think that's what Threshold are doing here. They, they're very inclusive 50Ks, that they're just trying to get everyone to the finish line. And I think when women know that you're being supported to get to the finish rather than you're being kind of prevented from getting there. We want to cut you off. We want to show this race is hard. That's what we need more races to do. Thank you very much, Sophie. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. So what about diversity in running? How do we get more black and South Asian women running on the trails and lining up at the start of ultra distance races? I spoke first to Tash, who founded a group called Black Girls Do Run. Run UK started in 2019. Based on my experiences as a runner, I was running for 20 years at the time and didn't see many black women at races and wanted to make a difference, wanted to inspire more black women to run. So we're well represented at elite level, but regular black women where you didn't really see much of that. Okay, tell me uh, a little bit about your uh, personal running story, Tash. So I started running in 1999. Um, I ran on a treadmill just before that and one day I decided to run outside and I found it really difficult to switch from treadmill to outside but I loved it. I loved the change of scenery, just feeling the air on my face and um, I entered a 5k race and I really loved that end goal of training for something on a specific day, for a specific distance and I fell in love with running and I've not looked back. So tell me, um, things hopefully are changing, but why did you, as a, as a black woman, suddenly fall in love with running? Because as you've said, you, you go to races and you, you haven't seen people that look like you. Why did I fall in love with running? Or why did you go running in the first place? Okay, so my, my 
became active at quite a young age, we were about 18, 19. And I decided to lead an active lifestyle because growing up, my dad had diabetes and my mum has hypertension and I didn't want to contract those diseases. And those diseases are quite prevalent in the black community. And then running was the sport that I loved. Like I ran at school, um, I didn't take it as seriously as I could because my friends didn't like running, so I didn't get into it as much. But I guess it was always there, always within me, so running, the treadmill was my favorite piece of equipment. And then I just made that step to run outside and I just, I just loved it. I just loved putting one foot in front of the other and I loved having races as a goal and um, running communities great and yeah. So really. what has changed in the years that you've been running? Do you see more diversity on the start line these days? Definitely. And why is that? Diversity has been inclusive one because of groups like ours, that goes to my in areas, emancipated from. There's so many other groups doing the work to encourage smaller minority groups to run and um, it's working. So what more do you guys or do we need to do to make that diversity more diverse? What do we need to do to make it uh, better? So I think a big thing is advertising. So in the race information, from the photos on your website, include a more diverse range of people and then people will look at your websites, look at the Instagram page and see themselves and feel that that event is for them. That's really important. That's one message I've really got today is, is when you look at a start line or when you look at a website, you need to see yourself there. It's definitely. It's very interesting. Tash, thank you so much. Oh, I'll just ask you one more thing as well. Um, specifically black women in running. Are there any issues related to black women running in this country or around the world or in ultras or in 5Ks? What would you say to black women about running? Give it a go, embrace it. There's so much out there to encourage you. There's park run, there's catch to 5K, there's lots of mutual running groups. They, are, they may look intimidating on the outset, but usually they're quite welcoming. Just be brave, take a step, and you know, running changes lives, and it will change your life. Oh, thank you, Tash. Thank you so much. <laughs> As part of the 5050 initiative, Threshold has recruited a team of women ultra 5050 challengers to help to inspire other women to take on a trail race or an ultra distance event. Each of the challengers has their own unique story to tell, from a cancer survivor taking on her very first running event to an experienced ultra runner coming back to the sport following pregnancy. I spoke to one of the challengers, Nazri. Nazri, why are you at the Threshold 50-50 event today? I am here looking for a brand new challenge. I'm here looking for personal growth and I'm here to be a representation for South Asian women. Tell me what organisations you're involved in. So I work for the Outrunners and I head up on the women's side and what we are doing is working with black and brown women who are not into running, who are not into fitness and what we are doing is using movement to encourage them to get into running and hopefully getting them to do a 5k by the end of the programme. Why is it that black and brown women don't stand on that start line as much as skinny white men? Okay, so there's a number of factors to consider. First of all, we need to look at representation. Why? Why? There's not enough brown and black women out there on the courses. Luckily, this year, last couple of years, there's been few representations, but we need more. But why is the reason it's more to do with maybe cultural reasons? Are we breaking barriers with women? What I do is I work on a program for the outrunners, we're breaking barriers. We need to break the initial barrier for them to get into running. If they're not into running, you will never see them at the start line. It's important that they break personal barriers before we get them into the start line and that's what I'm working on right now. Are they, are they, just thinking about some of the things that have been said this evening, are they historical barriers as well like from parents that, that Asian women just don't go running, that's not what Asian girls do? I think it's more to do with, because we don't see it, we don't consider it, we don't think about it. It's more to do with no one stopping us from doing it, it's just more to do with we don't see it, so we never think about it, we never ever put ourselves out there to do something like that. Another thing is also representation, by that I mean brand marketing. 
why is it that enough brands are not using us as representation? Because we don't see out there on the forefront, that also has an impact on why is it that we don't have many out there. And that's something else I'm trying to work on. I'm working on something called South Asian Movement and us being a representation, me being out there on Ultra, hopefully will encourage so many other South Asians to be out there. I'm going to bring them with me as well next year. I wish. I want to. Nasri, thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Finally, I grabbed James from the Running Channel to ask what his thoughts are on the 50-50 initiative. So we're at the Running Channel always keen to get as many runners into running and like obviously trying to get more people into ultra running no matter the gender. So 50-50 is such a key thing of getting more women into running, feeling like ultra running is a space that they can actually get involved in and hearing all the panel talks is exactly what we at the Running Channel are trying to encourage as well. So it was really amazing to hear all these inspiring women talk about the barriers that running and ultra running have, but also the ways that those barriers can be overcome is just incredible. Can you explain a bit about, because it's not 50K and 50 miles, is it? <laughs> What's this 50-50 business all about? Yeah, so obviously Threshold is one of the uh, one of the best in terms of 50-50 um, gender split. So 50% men, 50% women. So they um, they used to have 50-50 pre-COVID, but post-COVID, they and basically every other running space has realized is that women's um, taking up running events has slipped from uh, pre-COVID to post-COVID. So this is a, a point of realizing that there is this challenge of trying to encourage more women back into trail running, ultra running, and running in general. So this event and what they're going to try and do going forward is to get back to that 50-50 split. What can we do to help women or to encourage women to stand on that start line? Yeah, I mean, the main thing is I, we, we've had so many communication in the running channel. We've just done a huge campaign about women's safety in running. And the main thing is just be better. Ask questions if you're not sure what to do with a race. If you're running behind a female runner during a race or during an, any kind of training run, make sure you're not running so close behind that they can be threatened. Chat, talk, like the whole point of why the running community is amazing is because we are a community. So anything you can do that you think might be intimidating while you're on a run, passing a woman too closely when you're overtaking, just give everyone more space, everyone more respect, and the running community will be a better place for it. And you touched a little bit about what the Running Channel is doing. So where does the Running Channel stand on this issue? What are you doing to address it? Yeah, so we just literally, uh, uh, the whole of October was um, a Connected Confidence campaign was how uh, running could be safer for everyone, but primarily women. So we, we did a, a women's only uh, relay race along Hadrian School, where we had some incredibly inspiring female runners taking on this amazing event. And we, we hosted a panel similar to tonight. We actually had Sophie Power as part of our relay race as well, who was here tonight. Uh, but it's just trying to get the, spread the word of, of how difficult it can be for, for female runners to get into running and to be in running and showing that you know there are ways to feel safer of, either through the community or through the tech that you can run with. But there are so many ways to get over these barriers that exist for women more than men. Cheers, James. Thank you very much. Now, I will be on the start line of the Race to the Stones 2024. If you are a female runner looking to step up to ultra distance races, you can be absolutely sure that the Threshold Trail series has got your back. They're making a real effort to help you feel more confident about getting to and standing on that start line. And they will be making absolutely sure that you are welcomed and you are well looked after when you get there. So if you have been inspired by some of the women you've seen talking here today, then please do subscribe to the channel. Click here to watch my amazing wife running 100 miles. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the start line next time. Bye bye.